Second Tech, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There has been much talk about ensuring South Africa's transition to a low carbon economy is a just transition, but action has been limited. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the concept and how it could unfold. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Where does the concept of a just transition come from? Well Chanel, it's an international concept that really comes out of the labor movement in the US from the 1970s where there were toxic spills and minority groups and labor were being disproportionately affected. So that's where the concept came from. It got broadened generally around the world to environmental protection projects and ensuring that workers were not disproportionately negatively affected by that. And now it's very much linked globally to the transition to a low carbon economy. So the move away from fossil fuels towards renewables, clean energy. And uh, that, so that's how the concept has evolved really as a labor movement demand and now more and more governments around the world are adopting it as part of the transition to a low carbon future. What has South Africa done about it to date? Well, again, here yeah, it's really been a labor movement led issue. Kasatu has put the just transition on South Africa's agenda initially. But then we had the national development plan process that over two years had consultations around our vision 2030. And during that consultation process, we looked at a more sustainable, environmentally friendly economy. And the National Development Planners drafted the National Development Plan in 2012 and included the just transition concept in our low carbon transition. So it's very much embedded. So we have got this framework and it's very much a social justice framework that as we transition, firstly, we need to transition in a way that workers and communities that would be affected by climate change unjustly, say for, for instance, by the impact on climate in the form of droughts or floods, there must be protection for those uh, communities and, and workers. And secondly, those workers in the uh, fossil fuel supply chains, the energy intensive supply chains, the carbon heavy supply chains, as we exit those industries or transition away from them, they must be cushioned during that process. And since then, uh, we have then had the job summit process where we've agreed that we should form a, a structure, a presidential led structure, a, a climate change coordinating commission um, that would oversee the just transition. This would be probably multi-stakeholder. The issue is that even though we've agreed to it, that structure has not yet been set up. So in terms of the just transition, it's really more about an academic research and labor led demand rather than any real actions on the ground. That, so that, that is the new demand, that we shift from talking about the just transition to actually implementing it. And the next key step, uh, many believe, would be to set up this presidential commission on climate change to oversee it. What role could the repurposing of ESCOM's power stations play? Well, I think that ESCOM uh, is being relatively progressive in looking at the future of the power stations that are going to be decommissioned from next year through to the end of the decade, 2030. There are four power stations, Camden, Kamati, um, Hendrina, uh, and Hrefle that will be decommissioned over that period, all the units. Already many of these power stations are not operating anywhere near their nameplates, so they're already being curtailed. But there is going to be eventually a closure of production there. So I think these could be flagship projects in terms of South Africa's trust transition. We see Eskom already has expression of interest into the market, looking for ways to start uh, reforming these uh, power stations into a low carbon uh, production centers, as well as to use the land, the water associated with these power stations in more creative ways. We've also seen that the generation division has sent out a, a request for information around these four individual power stations. We need to look at a repowering of those power stations. They have a big infrastructure in place in terms of uh, the, the uh, high voltage transmission yards, for instance, that should be used, and, but can't be used anymore for coal. One for one, the coal is no longer linked to these power stations. All of them are importing coal. Only uh, Hendrina has a tired mine in the form of Optimum, but Optimum, as we know, is in business rescue and has not been supplying Hendrina for some time. 
So really, it's really about new technologies to repower these power stations over a period, whether it's solar, uh, whether it's gas, whether it's other technologies that could emerge through that process. So there's a, there's a formal market testing exercise. And the next step would then actually to uh, get permission from government to proceed with these pre-purposing projects. Um, and once that is in place, and, uh, and that is still uh, up for you know, discussion, it's not yet in place because it would have implications for, for policy. It also has implications, for instance, for the integrated resource plan, which doesn't factor this in. So we'd need alignment at that level. But if those authorizations are given, I think these repurposing projects would be South Africa's just transition flagships. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.